Hi, my name's Rowan and this is the Yorkshire Sew Girl. Day four, I've made it. It's Sunday. I haven't got my ring light on. It's really dull outside, but I haven't got my ring light on because it doesn't look too bad right now, does it? My hair has calmed down from yesterday, from my Charlie's Angels look, as uh, Rachel said. <laughs> so it's looking a little bit more with it. Now, change of plan this morning. I am quickly popping to the local shopping centre with my mum and stepdad because my brother's coming over to granddad's sit today. So I'm going to quickly pop there because I've got some things to return and maybe pick up a couple of bits as well while I'm there. So just before they come and pick me up, I'm going to do my advent calendars and then we're going to crack on. Now, the only other thing I've got planned today is going out for a meal with the in-laws. So I am going to try later on to do my tutorial for maybe the bookmarks. I know I said about the bookmarks and the little initial tags that I was going to try and do that. So I'll try and do one of them hopefully today and get it in today's vlog. If not, it will be next week. I'm sorry, but just bear with me. So we're going to do first of fabrics this morning. So I am looking for number four oh, it's on the top. Again, I did not do that on purpose. Number four. Let's have a look. How is everybody getting on anyway with all the vlogmases? It is hard to keep up. I understand, but I'm loving it. I'm not watching any television. <laughs> the only thing I've watched is Strictly. That's it. What is this? A Christmas gift just for you from First Fabrics. I'm not going to show you the back, but it says online discount code, enter at checkout, and then it gives me the thing in the amount of £10 and it, with an expiry date of the end of February. So that's £10. Let me have a look. Uh, this voucher has no cash value, no, no, no. Full amount must be used in one transaction. No change can be given. Valid only for items available for purchase at First Fabrics. Wow. <laughs> I'm a bit gobsmacked by that. That's amazing. So £10 off a shop. Doesn't say anything about a minimum spend, I don't think. But I'll have a look in a bit more detail. That is amazing. What a gift. Right, I need to make sure that I do not lose that. <laughs> that will be getting spent. <laughs> Right, and then let's quickly do the Beyond the Pink Door one, because I think my mum and that are going to literally be outside in a minute. Right, let's see if I can find... Sorry for the rustling, but I'm just getting in there. I know there's a couple of you that actually quite cheaply like a bit of rustling, which did make me giggle. Get myself in the face with it. Right, let's get that out of the way. Right, 24, 5, 14. I'm seeing a lot of fours, but it's not the one I want. 20. How long are we going to be here for? Oh, it's a little dinky one. Oh, she says. I've got, oh, it's carnage this morning because I'm in a hurry. It's carnage. <laughs> Here we go, number four. Now, I was watching Andrew's vlog this morning and she was saying that they designed all of these individually. The amount of work and stuff that's gone into this is just unbelievable. Go and watch Andrea's vlog actually from yesterday because it explains a little bit about the advent calendars and why she did it and everything and it literally made me cry. I'm just... I'm just saying, I had a tear in my eye and everything. She's just wonderful. Right, let's have a look what's in here. It's all that little dinky thing. Oh, I love that. That, for anybody who doesn't know what that is, is a um, magnetic seam guide. So you pop it onto your um, plate of your sewing machine at whatever seam width you want and then you can guide your fabric down the side and it does a lot of the hard work for you if you want a nice straight line how lovely is that i haven't seen one like this before i had one which was just a plain magnet one but i don't know where it is a lot of stuff goes down the back of my <laughs> back of my desk and is never seen again <laughs> so how lovely is that lovely 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 thank you very much andrea Right, that's it. I'm going to go really quickly. It might take you along with me. It depends how busy it is. I mean, it's a Sunday before Christmas. It's going to be manic, isn't it? <laughs> but I will try and take you along with me maybe for a little bit. See you soon.
Right, I am back from the shopping centre and we are just about to go out for lunch. But I thought while the daylight is good and just before we go, I'm going to try and show you quickly how to make the little bookmarks that I kind of discussed. So I've just got a couple here to show you. These are just made with scrap pieces of fabric. Now I've made a couple of different ones. This one I've used with quite a thick, heavy interfacing and it's a lot stiffer. And then this one I've made with kind of like um, a fusible, like batting type thing. And I think I prefer this, it's a lot softer. But whatever you've got in your little stash, because that's the whole point of this, isn't it? Is trying to use up something that you've already got. So all you need to do is choose some fabrics. So I've just got these here. That is what this one's made out of. So you'll see on the back it's this and on the front it's this. But you could choose three different fabrics if you wanted easy so mine are just you know fat quarters that i've used a bit of and you only need a small amount so i've got these two here and then this is my fusible batting that i use and i prefer this is a lot softer so let me talk you through i have cut mine out already just to make it even quicker but it takes a matter of minutes so you want to be cutting three four and a half by four and a half inch squares now you can make a little template if you want to make loads of these or you can just do it with a quilting ruler or however you do it but i just used my quilting ruler and did four and a half inches by four and a half inches again you can make them bigger or smaller totally up to you i've looked at loads of different um things on pinterest but this is just how i do it so on this one for example i have got two exactly the same so one for the front and one for the back and then i have done a square in this one okay and then the other thing that you want is one four and a half by four inch square half inch square of whatever interfacing you're using or batting and then another one which you then just chop in half okay so what you could do i kind of tend to cut two at a time out because i'm going to then have a little spare um half triangle so what you've got is three four and a half by four and a half inch squares of different fabrics again your choice a four and a half by four and a half inch square of batting or interfacing and then another one that's cut in half to create a triangle okay now there's loads of ways you can do this now as well you can stick everything together <coughs> excuse me mine actually isn't fusible sorry mine is just like a sewing one if you've got a fusible one, it's great because you can then just go and iron it straight onto your pieces. But if not, I'm doing it the really super quick way, so you don't need to do that. What we're going to do then is I'm going to transfer you down onto my desk so that you can see what I'm doing and we'll go from there. OK, so here are our pieces. I've cut them out already just to make it really simple. So we've got three pieces of four and a half by four and a half inches of fabric a four and a half by four and a half inch of interfacing and another one that's been cut in half okay and what we're going to do is we're just going to sandwich them all together it's as simple as that so let me grab my pins what we're going to do is we're going to put the interfacing on top of one piece okay like so now again if you've got fusible you can just iron that on and it'll just stick to it you don't need to worry about it the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your accent piece and that is the piece that's going to be the little piece here and you're going to iron it in half and that just gives you and i've already done that a little crease here look okay so that's your square chopped in half and you're going to take your other interfacing piece and you're going to lay it or iron it if it's fusible inside just to give it a little bit of cushioning does that make sense okay so then what you want to do is sandwich this in between the pieces. OK, so this is one of the um, front piece, the back piece, and this is your little triangle. So just line it up carefully against the raw edges. Yeah. And then all you're going to do is get this piece. Let me get it the right way around and lay it on top like that. So everything is sandwiched in between. OK, and then I'm just going to pin those just really rough and ready in place. OK, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, what you have to do now, though, is leave space when you're going to sew this together to be able to turn it out. And the best way to do this is to leave a space on one of the sides that does not have your triangle piece. So my triangle piece is laid under here. 
and to turn it back around it's going to be easier to leave a space on this side and the reason you're leaving your space in between is so that you can then turn it out when it's finished okay so i've just done this really rough and ready and what we're going to do now is we're going to sew from here all the way across using whatever seam size you like really but i just used half an inch around to this bit here back stitching at the beginning and at the end so it leaves this little gap here free and then what we can do is turn it round. So I'll do that now and show you. Now I've just got pink thread in here because it was what I was using before, but you guys can use whatever you want. If you want to use like a contrasting one or anything like that, then you crack on. But the reason I put my pins like this is to remind me that I don't want to sew in that bit in the middle. So let's go. Okay, so I already went wrong because I didn't start from here. <laughs> start from this pin and go all the way around, back stitching at the front and the back. So I could take those pins out now. And then what we're going to do is just trim it. And you'll see that I've done this mega rough because I'm just showing you how to do it. You might want to be a lot neater. Now I'm just going to get my scissors and I'm going to just gently trim around the edges. And then I'm going to cut my corners. Don't go too close to the corners or you'll snip your threads. So let's cut those corners off and I always like to even narrow up those seams even more just to make it sit really nice and neatly and then it doesn't matter how badly you've sewn it <laughs> it still doesn't look too bad okay so that's what it looks like now can you see and here is where the gap is so what we're going to do now is we're going to just turn this out okay so get your fingers in between the two coloured pieces of fabric. The light's so bad I've had to put my serious reader's light on. It's only 10 to 1 and it is ridiculous out there. So let's pull this out. It's always a bit fiddly. But let's just poke it out. Eek, come on, you can do it. Come on, Mr Bookmark. Ah, it's coming now, look. That moment when it starts to say, take shape is just lovely. So poke all these out and then what you want to do is get a poking tool. We've got one here. So this is mine. Okay, so look at this. I mean, it looks a bit rubbish at the minute. Pop that into the hole. Poke out your corners nice and neat. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect, people. This is just a little gift or maybe for yourself. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to look like it's been handmade. So I'm just poking all of those corners out now really quickly because I'm trying to go to lunch <laughs> and food is everything. <laughs> so, oh, she says I've done a really bad job of that one. Let's just poke that out a bit more. There we go. I'd lost a bit in there. Right. So you will now see it starting to come to shape. So where your hole is here, look the pieces will automatically lie flat. So what you want to do is you want to just go give this a little press now. Back in a second. Okay, so I've pressed mine now. So that looks a lot neater and tidier. Now, I could have done my corners a bit better, but I'm not bothered. I quite like the soft look anyway for it's, as a bookmark. The other thing you can do um, is, you know, do something different on here. If you wanted to put a little sticker or an emblem or an initial or something like that, you can do. But all we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch around the edge, which will then hold in place that little gap there. So I'm just going to do that now. Now, I can't find my hump jumper. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those before, people, but it's a little device that you put underneath to make sure that when you get to the very edge, your machine doesn't start getting trapped into the fabric. So instead of using my hump jumper, I'm just going to use this other one that I've made. But you can just use a piece of scrap fabric or anything like that to make sure that this foot is at the same level. 
and then it won't hopefully she says push the fabric down into the um, machine there we go so just go all round all of the edges and again it doesn't have to be perfect people a bit of tidying up but i'll do that again and there we have it there is our little bookmark so what do we think i've now got three bookmarks <laughs> but like i said this interfacing is a bit of a stiff of interfacing i don't think it's quite as nice whereas slight wadding the softer version is just lovely so i've got a couple you'll see this one i did in the contrasting top stitch just to match in, but this one I just had pink in my um, sewing machine, but it actually goes with the pink on here. So I think that is really cute. And it's not the most perfect work I've ever done because I was trying to show you really quickly, but you'll see that is just in a matter of minutes and you could just batch some of these up and then pop one in everybody's little present. And I just think they are really good. So I hope you like that anyway. If anybody would like um, some written instructions or anything like that, um, drop me a message and I can always try and do that for you. But hopefully you'll be able to use this little tutorial. But how easy is that? And it's using scrap fabric as well. Win-win. Right, I'm off to prettify myself. Maybe get changed into something a bit more fancy. Um, and then I'm off for some good scran. Oh, I can't wait. I'll catch up with you later. Bye. Hello. I am back from our very late lunch. It is five o'clock nearly. I'm not going to lie to you. I've had a few glasses of wine. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't have a starter because I wanted to save myself a pudding. Um, so by then I'd had two glasses of wine. So I was a little bit fresh. So anyway, we've come back. We've been downstairs just doing a few bits. I need to iron. So I'm going to go do some ironing in a minute. Husband is watching football, so he's more than happy. So I've come up here to kind of speak to you. Now, I've got two options now. I can go downstairs and iron like a really good mum should. <laughs> or I can sew. However, you know when you've just had a little bit of alcohol in your system and you're like, is that really the safest idea? I don't know. Probably not. So I'm drinking water right now, you know, because I'm being really good. My fringe, I am very aware is so long it's poking me in the eye pretty much now so i'm gonna have to do something with this i have got an appointment in a couple of weeks but i'm gonna have to do something out of because i mean in a fringe gate do you know what i mean and also the good thing about this is i'm not having to pluck my eyebrows <laughs> maybe i'll keep it for a bit longer i don't know because as soon as i cut it i'm gonna have to pluck my eyebrows and no one likes to do that anyway is that too much information so yeah i'm gonna sign off for today um i think i'm gonna try not to sew anything because i might regret it in the morning <laughs> we'll see um but yeah i'm gonna sign off hope everybody's all right i've had a lovely day today i'm gonna to go do some boring chores Pfft, rubbish and i'll catch up with you again tomorrow bye everybody <laughs>